Hi, and welcome back to Joe's DIY. Today, I'm in front of the camera because I have a very special story to tell about this amplifier that I just purchased, the Yamaha A-32D. It's a very special amplifier in my life because it was one of the first, uh, I wouldn't say super expensive, but very more high-end amplifiers that my dad ever bought in our household. And I have lots of stories about this amplifier that always come rushing back in my mind. And today I'm going to share some of that with you. I'm going to share the time that we went where and where we bought it. I'm going to share a little bit about what it was like having it in our home back in the 80s. Um, my dad bought this stereo in 1987. So there's, I'm sure it's going to be a walk back on, on memory lane for a lot of people. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and demo the, the stereo. And I actually have the original uh speakers that came with the stereo uh so that's basically all i have left because my dad has sold that stereo many years ago uh, but uh i can't wait to tell you about it uh and i also wanted to thank all my new subscribers uh we're up to 350 subscribers uh which makes me very happy uh i'm so happy that uh this, some of these videos are very helpful to other people uh, i will continue trying to make more diy videos i just have not come across the right projects that i would like to share yet uh, but I will. Uh, but again, once again, thank you so much for all the support and all the positive feedback I've gotten through your comments. Uh, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed this video. So the story begins uh, with the place where my father first purchased this stereo, and that was at the Federated Group electronic store. Uh, this store has some significance, so I will share a quick history about the store. So before there was a Best Buy, or you could buy everything in under one roof, like a place like Walmart or Target, or even order everything from web website like Amazon or eBay. There were stores such as the Federated Group, a store that basically lasted uh, from the beginning of the 70s all the way up to the late 80s. Uh, there's an interesting history to it, which I'm going to briefly cover. Uh, there's not a lot of information out there about the Federated Group. Whatever I was able to find is what I will be able to present today on this video. Federated Group was founded by a man named Wilfred Schwartz in 1970. It started off with him purchasing uh, a warehouse in LA that sold electronics, um, which he opened up partly to be a retail store and uh, in 1976 they opened up two more stores uh, one being the superstore they had in Westminster have not been able to find a lot of uh, information about the location of these stores uh, there are some pictures here one from the South Bay store and one from the, another store in LA I, I don't know if it's the one that uh, he bought to convert into a retail store uh, but uh, those are just some a couple of pictures so um, they opened up quite a few stores. I know that they even tried to expand into Texas, which was not a good thing for them because uh, that's basically the reason why they ended up having to sell uh, in 1987 uh, to Atari, which bought them for, according to some sources online, uh, $67.3 million. Uh, there are some news articles from the New York, New York Times that show this. Uh, that's pictured right there. Um, so what ended up happening is uh, the store was sold for $67.3 million, but according to Atari, uh, I think the, the Federated Group did not present uh, exactly the, the correct amount of what the worth of the company was. Uh, so they s basically uh, ended up suing Wilfred Schwartz and the Federated Group uh, for $43 million. So after the whole debacle between Atari and the Federated Group, uh, I am not sure what exactly happened, but uh, Atari ended up selling all 26 of the Federated Group stores uh, that were located in Los Angeles and San Diego to another store called Silo, and also announced that they had lost about $85 million that year. Uh, and the stores remaining uh, went into liquidation uh, in 1989, and uh, Basically, uh, the Federated Group disappeared by the end of 1989. Uh, so, um, 
I don't really recall any of this. I mean, I it's been, you know, close to 30 years since this, since this happened, and I was a child uh, when this happened. So, you know, my my memories of the Federated Group are, are very vague. You know, it, it's it's been an important part of my history with the Yamaha stereo because uh, this is where my my dad, you know, bought the stereo and also bought a VCR and probably a, a TV as well. I'm, I'm not sure many years ago um but uh i have very vague memories of the place i know that there was one low where we went to buy the stereo was located in huntington park california uh, and uh i don't re exactly remember the location i mean if i could probably find it on google map i'll probably show it but um so uh i just remember it being a very neat looking store uh the decor is you know, typical of whatever electronic stores you might have been into into the 1980s. Um, I think probably the most memorable thing about the Federated Group, and at least in, in, in from my experience, was the commercials. Uh, they had a, a mascot called uh, Fred Rated. Uh, he was kind of one of these zany 1980s uh, caricature type of characters that was played by an actor named uh, Shadow Stevens. Um, so he would make these all these kind of crazy commercials, and uh, you could definitely look them up online. They're kind of a laugh, um, but you know that was probably the thing that I remember them the most by. Um, so let's go ahead and, and get more into my whole experience uh, from the 1980s going to this store and, and, and buying the stereo. Uh, I just remember, you know, my back in those days, you'd go into the store and there was always a salesman that. Would, would you know talk to you about the, the the stereo demo it to you tell you all the specs i mean this was an experience back in the 1980s that you just don't get anymore i mean you go to a typical best buy or a target or a walmart and the the kid that's selling you the stereo has no idea about its specs i mean they they, they you know they don't tell you which they can't tell you which one is the best one they basically tell you that they're all the same which is partly true because you know none of the stuff today is is made like they, they made them back in the 1980s but i remember distinctly that the, you know the, there was a salesman he had a shirt and tie you know he you know walked you through the whole process of you know what the stereo was about you know who made it you know the the specs i mean that those were salesmen back in those days and i just remember this guy you know t talking my dad through it you know really selling him the stereo and finally my dad you know went for it and i mean this stereo was pretty expensive at the time i mean we're talking about over a thousand dollars that i recall for the whole cabinet so let's go ahead and get into what he got uh with the stereo cabinet so as you can see from my pictures uh you you got when you bought a stereo usually you did have the option to buy all the the the, the accessories that come with it so he went ahead and bought uh, the cabinet that went with it, uh, which was this one right here pictured. Um, th this is the best picture that I could find. I really, you know, it's been over 30 years, so it's hard to find good pictures of this. But that's the cabinet. And as you can see, uh, you can, you know, it had an opening on the top where you can uh, put the, the turntable that went with it. And it didn't have a, a, a dust cover, but it did have uh, basically a door that opened to cover the turntable. Uh, in the cabinet so I thought that was a pretty neat feature uh, so you got basically with the stereo the turntable which was the Yamaha uh, P-30 uh, you know automatic turntable it was a belt drive I remember that uh, you also got uh, the tuner which was a T32 AM FM tuner uh, Yamaha brand uh, very nice and you got your controller that came with it as well as pictured you got uh, the graphic or equalizer the GE-30 uh, love those display lights I mean uh, you know they're little LEDs uh, but in the 1980 it was a sight to see to see that you know coming off your stereo um, and then you got your uh, Yamaha A-32D which was the star of the show 140 uh, watts per channel uh, very 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 nice you know along with the speakers the uh, NS-A220 uh, uh, 
And then uh, you also got uh, your dual deck cassette deck, K-30. Um, I used to love that deck. Uh, it's a very good deck to get these days because it's one of those decks that's not auto reverse. So uh, you know you that the Asimovs usually stay uh, in place, so you're not going to get any problems with the alignment of the of the tape heads. Uh, my dad did not buy a CD player with this uh, setup because at the time he had not started collecting CDs. So this is all we got. Um, very, very, very beautiful uh, stereo setup, especially for the 1980s. I mean, I remember uh, Saturday mornings when he would crank this thing up. I mean, he would, you know, you could hear the bass, you know, shaking the entire house. <laughs> I mean, maybe because I was a kid, I remember it that way. But I mean, th this stereo could could go, you know, it was, it was pretty loud. Um, I also remember uh, the day that my dad got it. You know, we went into the store probably around five o'clock, and we got out of there probably at midnight. You know, between the negotiating um, with the salesperson, and back in those days, I mean, that's one of the things that people don't remember is that you could actually negotiate a price with the salesman, uh, or you can negotiate payments. I mean, they they were they always there always was some type of deal, and I just think that that's something that's a relic and that's no longer something you. I mean, you go to Best Buy. And the price is the price, you know. Unless you come into the store with a coupon, you're not going to get the stereo for any cheaper than what's listed on the on the on the sales floor. But anyways, uh, he finally got the thing uh, around midnight, and I remember my dad staying up till maybe like four in the morning trying to put it all together because it was not an easy thing to put together. I mean, he wasn't an English reader, so you know he kind of had a piece, you know, what the manual told him to do. And it, it was a process. I think I remember even a neighbor having to come over and kind of help him out on how to set the whole thing up. So, but when he finally did, I mean, it was an amazing sound. Uh, and this radio would be blasting every Saturday morning, every uh, Sunday night or Sunday, you know, afternoon uh, after church. I mean, it was a great way to listen to music in those times. And honestly, I mean, I didn't grow up with a lot of luxury, but this was. A very nice thing to have in our house now this Yamaha stereo has historical significance to me the first time that I ever got exposed to some of the greatest music ever written and, and performed um, this is the stereo that I listened to the Beatles the first time this was the stereo that I listened to the Rolling Stones for the first time this is the stereo that I first heard Led Zeppelin for the first time this is the stereo that I first listen to Jimi Hendrix on. This is a stereo that uh, got me introduced to Carlos Santana and uh, the Latino rock that my dad enjoyed so much uh, as, a, as a young man. Um, you know, this is the first time I heard Elvis and, you know, Buddy Holly and Richie Valens. You know, all that music was exposed to me for the first time through this stereo. So historically, I mean, this was the gateway that got me into loving classic rock. And I, in my honest opinion, you know, it's probably the greatest era. The 60s and the 70s, to me, is the greatest era of music ever. Um, you know, the second being the 80s. Um, but I, I believe that, you know, we had some of the greatest music come out during those two decades. And I heard it all for the first time with this stereo. So forever, I mean, it will keep, it will be a very important part of my history and my life as a, a music aficionado. So if you stuck this long uh, for this video, I'm now happy to finally demo this great amplifier uh, that's been so important in my life. Just to give you a little bit of backstory, uh, in 1998, my dad finally got rid of the Yamaha uh, stereo rack with all the components in it. I don't recall uh, how much he ended up giving it up for, but I'm pretty sure that it wasn't even up for $100, which is atrocious. But I think at that time, I think my dad just wanted to get rid of his big stereo because it just took up too much room in the house. Um, and he kind of had moved on. So he uh, wanted something a little bit more modern, and he thought that getting rid of that stereo uh, would be okay. But <laughs> I totally disagree. I mean, had I 
you know, had I had my own place, I probably would have bought it off of him. But 20 plus years uh, since the last time I saw this receiver, I'm very excited to finally open my latest eBay purchase. Uh, so the, here's the package. Let's go ahead and open it. I got uh, a box cutter. So, the seller mentioned that this was in pretty good shape, and I would probably agree with him. I mean, I don't see any scratches. And it's probably a little dirty there, and nothing that a little bit of cleaning won't help. But that is the tuner. Get that out. Put that aside for a second. Okay. And, uh, oh. This is, wow, so he did get a chance to send me the controller here. And that is the original controller as shown. And the star of the show. Get all this styrofoam out. paper cutter here and my box cutter cut this up okay. All right. All right. take a little bit of work here but This looks very, very clean. Very good shape for being over 30 years old. No rust anywhere. There's the back. The back's a little stained, but sometimes you do get some moisture there, but other than that, looks in very good shape. the front the seller did mention that he didn't have that this dial here the button but that's an easy fix because I do have an extra button but this is looking very clean I don't even see any scratches I mean I do see oh there's one right there but I could probably wipe it down so what, we're gonna, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and give this a, a cleaning with some Windex. And uh, we'll put that other button in there. And then uh, we'll get this show on the road. Okay, so this is uh, the two components all set up. Um, so we are here, we have the A-32D. And you get those LED lights that goes with it. And you get your sound control. Beautiful display. I love the lights. Um, so this is its uh, own type of uh, VU meter. Uh, so it measures basically the output level uh, in watts or decibels. I'm not really sure. I think it's, yeah, it's. I guess it's watts. Um, so you can know exactly how much you have to raise the volume up to get the full 140. Um, and then you definitely have your selectors between your A and your B speakers. These have two inputs, which is something that I love because you can definitely go for that quadraphonic sound. Um, you have your bass uh, control for the left and right, and you have your treble control for the left and right speaker. You got a dynamic noise canceling uh, function that you can choose to either leave on or leave off. It's up to you. Um, if you're recording, uh, you can just leave it at source and wherever you have this selected, these are the different inputs. You can go ahead and select uh, 
just leave it there and it'll automatically record off whatever component you have turned on. If you choose to, you could also uh, adjust this to be either in tuner, so you could record off the radio, CD, or phono, and video. So those are the options that you can choose from to record off of. Obviously, you don't need the cassette selection because you know you can if you're going to dub tapes, you don't really need to choose the amplifier to do that. All you got to do is press uh, the tape option right there. Um, so that is the front. Now, I would have loved to have gone into depth uh, explaining a little bit about the T32. Problem was that when I got this component, I plugged it in, the display is not showing. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not able to use the tuner at this time that came with the components. I thought I was getting a wonderful deal with these two, uh, but unfortunately, this did not work. So um, I'm, I'm already working with the seller to give me a partial refund because I have no intention of returning this. This is in immaculate shape. Uh, but unfortunately, this will have to be dealt with later on, uh, which is a shame. But maybe I'll have a later video follow-up to talk about this tuner here. So at the, for the moment, I'm just going to remove it out of the equation because it's not even plugged in. So I'll put that on the side. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back of the uh, amplifier. So here's your classic uh, Yamaha setup. Um, you definitely have your inputs here for your AVs. Uh, you got your phono input there with your ground. You got a tuner input. Uh, this is for the CD. I know it's hard to see, but that is for the CD. That's for the tuner. You have your uh, tape uh, inputs. One is for the playback. One is for the recording out. So if you are choosing a different component uh, to record off of, you can capture the sound from here. Uh, and then you have additional video VCR inputs if you were to choose to hook up a VCR or some type of uh, comp uh, composite video input. The amplifier is capable of, of showing that, but it only will play playback on stereo, obviously. Um, and this one uh, is for uh, an equalizer if you were to choose to use one. Uh, obviously from my picture, you know that the, there's an equalizer that came with this beautiful display. You've got the red LEDs um, for you to adjust uh, each input on for each speaker. But uh, being that I'm not really interested in enhancing the sound, I think the amplifier does a good job of doing that. I'm not going to worry about uh, hooking one up uh, for my Insight rig. And here is the model number, A-32D. There is another model called the A-32. That one does not have the LED display uh, for the bass and the treble. It only has like a light for the power. Um, and there is the time, the service serial number, I guess. And then one of my most favorite parts about having these old type of uh, receivers is that, or amplifiers is that uh, you have uh, additional AC outlets to plug in components that you might have bought with the amplifier. So I think this is great. I mean, I wish amplifiers today had this. Obviously, they don't want, they want to spend the minimum amount of money to sell, you know, cheap amplifiers to people. So they're not going to spend extra money. But back in the day when stereos was an important part of your entertainment, they made sure that they tried their best to give you a good product. So here are the additional uh, power inputs. And then obviously you got your speakers. Uh, these are outputting at eight ohms, uh, or you could do four ohms if you have both the A and the B speakers hooked up. Um, and then I love these little, uh, I guess they, they would be clamps for the uh, speaker wire. So once you put your speaker wire, let me demonstrate that. So once you put in your speaker wire you know you'd clamp it on and it won't come off and that holds it pretty well so i like that about this amplifier it's always been a feature that i always remember when my dad had to disassemble this and then you know you unclamp it and it's easy to pull out so great little feature that these old amplifiers used to have some of them uh 
especially the Yamaha. And then the last feature that I wanted to mention is also the remote control. Um, so you have the option to uh, plug these into all your other uh, devices. Uh, I believe that this is for the, uh, I guess, another component. Um, this is explicitly for the tape. I don't know if you were able to plug this into another CD player because I we didn't have a CD player when I was young. Uh, or a laser disc, maybe. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, but I know that this is definitely uh, for the tape if you want to use a remote control with the tape. And the remote control is here. So this is a typical uh, 1980s control. Uh, you can see from the uh, aesthetic. Um, you got your uh, controller and you have the little window here with the infra infrared light that's in there that allows you to uh, connect with the receiver. Here's a look at the mapping of all the buttons. So you can see right there, pretty simple controller. Uh, my memories of it is that it looked way more complicated than, than what I remember it to be, but looking at it now, it's pretty simple. I don't think it's that complicated to kind of get. Okay, so here's a good look at the speakers that I will be using to demo this. This is a reunion. Uh, I've been about maybe 20 years apart. These are the original speakers. These are the NS-A220. Uh, and uh, these have been worked on and restored somewhat. Uh, the grills were completely trashed. If you've seen my grill video on how I restored this, you'll have an idea of the story behind that. But just to summarize, these were damaged with a combination of moving and also the 1987 Whittier earthquake that hit Los Angeles and uh, these tipped over and broke. So uh, they've been repaired, you know, as you can see in the video, I glued that and then we have those dowels into these uh, guides here. So this is what I got so far, you know. Uh, I mean, obviously I wish I had everything uh, again, but uh, that's gonna take some time and a couple of more visits to eBay to finally find every component to make this whole Okay, so I have the loudness, loudness set to zero and uh, I got my volume set to two. Uh, right now we're gonna be playing a CD. Uh, I don't have currently a Yamaha CD player, so the CD player will remain nameless. Let's just say it's a decent brand, uh, but uh, we're gonna be playing through the A speakers and I have my uh, bass, let me even it out a little bit. I'll set it up to zero first, so you can get, get a sound with no enhancements, and I'll also take off the the dynamics uh, noise cancel. We have the balance set to zero. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, start playing this. Here we go. Okay, let's go ahead and hear it with a little bit more bass, a little bit more treble. My goodness, I have not heard that kind of loudness in a serial component like this 
in a very long time. It's exactly the way I remember it. Um, let's go ahead and switch off the noise canceling. definitely cleans up the sound a little bit more and as you can see I mean, I mean right now I'm not even giving you the full you know we're we're kind of low here and if I, I put it a little higher we probably go get all the way to the 140 mark uh, with its full capacity definitely get a lot of sound out of this little amplifier I mean this sounds unlike anything that I have bought in the last 10 years and I'm so happy that this is part of my collection now um, it's great okay so I got my cheap little uh, realistic tape play tape player uh, the playback is decent I mean uh, I haven't had any problems with it uh, we're going to go ahead and play it through this uh, expensive Yamaha stereo and uh, we'll go ahead and see what it sounds like. Here's with uh, the bass tur turned to normal and the treble turned to normal and no dynamic canceling. I took out the Gen Sound uh, record player that I found and reviewed last time. We have the good old Reader's Digest uh, record on. So we're gonna try a couple of LPs to see how well this thing handles it. with some adjustment put the bass a little bit higher So here are my final thoughts on this uh, Yamaha A-32D. Uh, it is part of my childhood. It'll be part of my history forever, probably. And I'm so happy that once again, it's in my possession. 
This will be the all-in-one amplifier that I will use to listen to my vinyls, my tapes, my CDs. Um, I am so just thrilled to have this back in, in my hands. The bummer was that I was not get, able to get the tuner, uh, but that's not really a big deal. Um, I'm on the, you know, I, I talked to the guy, uh, he might give me a partial refund. So I intend on finding that tuner and uh, putting it together with other pieces of this same setup. And in the future, I'm hoping that I can bring you a video where I actually have the amplifier uh, with all the components that I had uh, with the entire cabinet. So that's a video that I'm looking forward to show very soon. Um, but just let me say that it's been a pleasure to be able to share uh, some history about the Federated Group and also some history of mine as far as my introduction to all this great music that I listened to for so many years growing up that basically have influenced uh, every aspect of my listening taste. Uh, but without further ado, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed my video and take care and have a wonderful week.